You know what I'm saying? But in the midst of even a nigga striving for greatness, ain't, he ain't gonna have no clear path where it ain't gonna be no adversity, where it ain't gonna be no haters. It turned out, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was the old, uh, old fuck nigga hating on the young niggas, bro. That's that's how I size it up. That's just what it was. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is not me. I'm not down in nobody. I'm giving it to a nigga that blood raw. I ain't finna sugarcoat shit. It was just, as I look back, hindsight is 2020. Old fuck nigga hating on the young niggas. Why would you say that if they was collaborating with y'all though? Because the wedge came with the Shaw shit. When Shaw got told on, it was over with. But I'm gonna tell you something, like I say, bro. <laughs> but we was always, you know, but we, we was the young niggas from the hood, man. I ain't even gonna tell you no lie, bro. That shit was, it was tailor made up until it wasn't. Up until it wasn't. That shit was tailor made. When I tell you, I was just waiting on Jim Iveen to call, like, hey, we want him. You know what I'm saying? Type of shit because the buzz was so heavy at that time. We ended up getting that call, though. Just yeah, we, we, yeah, just not with them. We ended up, you know what I'm saying, getting that call, but like, just kind of like with the shot situation. That shit drew a wedge because prior to that, you know, everybody was, you know what I'm saying? That's the hood. You know what I'm saying? Niggas put on for that hood. You know what I'm saying? Prior to that. But when that shit happened, and I hit the mic, every, that was all bets off. You know what I'm saying? The crazy part about that shit, just to even give it a, keep it a bean with you, my nigga, I wouldn't have never spoke on nothing until niggas started speaking on me. You know what I'm saying? I guess it was a, cause at that point when that shit had went, that shit sunk over the, when that shit had that happen, I put my, I put a group together. I took four niggas who had never been in the studio before and turned them niggas into a group. You know what I'm saying? I remember like I was telling you, but cause and I first interviewed the one that had crashed out, like we ain't had it. Like you asked me about the colors and shit like that. Like we, where we from? It ain't gang related. It's just like that was the color for our side of town. So it was the red team because our neighborhood, our side of town, our whole side of town, that's just the color that they was on. I don't know where this shit even came from. Cause when I came home from prison, niggas was already on that. Mm -hmm. So I just picked that up. Like niggas was the red team over there. You had niggas with the black side. You had the green side over there. You had the yellow side over there. Um, Mercy Drive, I think they had the army fatigues, like, so I don't know, but I just know I put a group together and it was the red team. Took four niggas who had never been in the studio before. I was even teaching these niggas how to count bars. You want to throw, throw their names out there? For the yeah, Mojo the first win. Mojo the first win, that's my brother. You know what I'm saying? Baby boy. Me and Keezy, Keezy was like the older, he was like the older brother. Me and Keezy was, was bunkies. In the county before I went to prison. We had the same charge. All us, we was in that bitch. And when we was in there, it wasn't that but G's in that bitch then. It was it was real G's in that bitch. Like, so you know, Keezy was Keezy always been a sporty ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Been a been been a get money ass nigga, sporty ass nigga, but he just was interested into the music. And he knew how hard a nigga name was ringing with the music. And not only that, me and him got like this. Cause we slept side by side every night. We yeah. in the same fucking, yeah. in the same cell. Me, him, and my nigga back. You know what I'm saying? He another real one, you know what I'm saying? So, Keezy, he, I, would, I told him about what I wanted to do when I came home on some real, on some real shit. Cause, you know, Keezy ain't go. I went up the road, Keezy ended up going home. You know what I'm saying? I left, went up the road, I guess Keezy ended up coming home, whatever. So, bro, getting it in, I came home. Shit, we just picked up where we left off type shit. And I'm telling them about, man, I got to get in the studio, do X, Y, and Z. Um, my nigga Calvin, good fellas. Calvin Ivory, my nigga. My R. brody, R.P. Calvin Ivory, my nigga Calvin Ivory, man. Motherfucking, they had the studio, good fellas studio. This was the spot to be at. Cause this where everybody was recording at. The nigga, um, I think Moot Button was recording that shit too. But me and Calvin, we, had, we all, we went to school together. Me, Mojo, Calvin, and his brother Carrie E. Free, free Carrie E. Free Carrie E. Free, free little bro, bro, and that bitch doing this shit. Yeah, yeah, free Carrie E. But Calvin was like, D boy, bitch, you fresh out of prison, bitch, bro. Listen, bro. Man, listen, fuck that bitch. You need to be in the studio, bro. 
He like, I already know you fresh out. I already know what you finna get ready to say, bro. So I'ma go ahead and lay it out for you. I ain't charging you nothing. Just record, bro. I got three rooms in this bitch. I got three engineers and two of these niggas make beats. Whatever you need right here, we got a photographer coming in this bitch. And this was him at a young age with a CEO's mind, which was intriguing to me, fascinating. I love how my nigga moved and he came home and told me, when I came home, he told me, nigga, just get in the booth, don't even worry about no money right now. Mm. Your ass need to be recording, bro. I say, you know what? I can't do nothing but respect it. Mm. Say less. Matter of fact, go in there and holler at, um, bro, see what hours, of it, what days available coming this bitch. I'll never forget. Remember it like it was yesterday. Go holler at, bro, bro. Tell him to check the schedule, bro. But tell him you, you own that bitch. He know you, he expecting for you to come in there and holler at him. I say, bet. You know what I'm saying? So I went in that bitch. We got it started. And I used to go to the studio by myself. We used to freestyle and shit at the Taliban. I have beat CDs laying around, and I see these niggas got skill. Put all these niggas in one group, and not everybody coming to the studio. Mm. You said the red team. Yep, red team. So, but the red team is before 1090 Block Boy. Yeah, red same team. People, yep, same, same, red same team. crew. Yeah, they went to. Uh, uh, Mohawk Mayhem. Yep, Mohawk Mayhem. My nigga. Uh, God to God, quick see, quick see to God, man. Rest in peace, my nigga, quick see. That's my, that's another nigga. I love that nigga. Quick see, another big homie from the hood. He gave us that name. That the yeah. straight, straight off the sack, straight off. Uh, yeah, fresh, fresh off the sack. Fresh, fresh, fresh off the sack. Yeah. Man, and I put Keys in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Keys was going to be on some easy E type shit. He just, you know, because he just was loving the music, loving the style, man. Get your ass in here and record something. And he came in that bitch. I showed him how to count bars, how to write bars. And he, uh, I always, out of 16, he'll come up with three bars and be stuck. I got to go pull his ass out the ditch, man. Say this woo, 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 real quick. And I give him over the hump and he finished his verse. But then was like memorable times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me, Mojo, Baby Boy, Keezy, and then Diggy. Diggy was in that crew too. But, you know, Diggy, I could. But um, that was like, them was some real memorable times, dog. We pressed up 500 CDs. We did two CDs at the same time. We did Fresh Off a of Sack and I did Fish, fish scale. scale. Yeah, Fish Scale. 500 CDs, 500 Fish Scales, 500 oh, Fresh Off a of Sack, right. and we put them in the streets. And in two weeks, went phones went to ring and they were booking us. Booking y'all for shows. Hell yeah. Paid shows. Paid shows. Paid shows. Paid shows. Paid shows. Paid shows. No manager, no nothing. I would just tell niggas what to say. I take a nigga, a nigga be, I bullshit you not, a nigga can be in the kitchen, getting this shit right. Phone might ring, hey bro, answer the phone, hey, 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 this the nigga from D, this the nigga from D-Land, tell the nigga X, Y, Z. Hello? Yeah. They won't, you know what, I swear to God, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you, bro, I'm going to save some of this shit for Netflix, my nigga. This shit, gonna, this shit got to be on Amazon Prime. <laughs> real talk, but it just was, that's how I knew it was real. I'm like, damn, I took four niggas that ain't never rapped before in the studio, put them together because I can work with getting them the fundamentals down pat, but what they brought to the table was style. You can't coach that. You see what I'm saying? You can't coach the style. And it was organic. I'm seeing what we doing. Niggas, I'm, I'm watching this shit. I'm listening to this shit. It's flavor. And once we put that shit out, the streets was automatically, they was receptive. Two weeks, phones went to ring and we getting booked for shows. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's in the city or out of, out of, out of the city? Both. It, it, it's the, it, Central I, I, Florida, yeah, the whole Central yeah, Florida. Uh, that's what I say, yeah. Because we at eight days. From like, Daytona, D Land, D -Land Lake Sanford. County, Sanford, Tampa, All Orlando. Paid, paid shows. Paid yeah, shows. Yeah, paid show. For sure. For shit show. And it wasn't, it wasn't no big eyes, little U's. You know, issues that kind of we bust everything story. down. That's what's up. We, we, it was, we was brothers. It was brotherhood. So it, it, if a goddamn pie comes to the table, we're gonna split that bit equal. We gonna cut that bitch. Ain't nobody gonna be hungry. Ain't nobody gonna be sitting at the table hungry. David Ruffins and nothing. Like that. Nah, no ego. T no ego. T it wasn't no egos involved. In the, in the crazy part, even with me, because I already had the, the yeah, name. I was established already. But at the same time, this for us. Because I wanted to see niggas win. Because like, we was all coming from the same place. I knew we was all facing the same adversity. You feel what I'm saying? And I just wanted niggas to win. Man, I see like even on like one of the covers, you kind of in the cut. You not even trying to be like in the center. Like yeah. you the big dog. We was on the, we was, we was, we were posted, we were posted on Keezy Vet. Keezy had that yellow vet. We post we shot, dropped the top on that bitch and yeah. did the photo shoot on the front of the vet. Like, 
Yeah. Y'all did, is that the same day when y'all did the swag surfing over? Yup. Okay, yeah, yeah, y'all did. Yup. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, exactly. Same day. Same day. We left the shoot and went to the spot. Oh, they shot, shot the video. The video took eight hours to shoot. <laughs> they shot that bitch with a camcorder. <laughs> Yeah, but that bitch went up. Yeah, he still he shot that bitch with a camcorder. I like you. Had the whip side up, yeah, bro. Yeah, bought yeah, Chevy yeah. on slides. Had the vert out there on slides. Yeah. Keezy pull up in the vet, like, and this was it was all organic. It was some real nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah, bro. That's when I knew this was the lane. You know what I'm saying? But in the midst of even a nigga striving for greatness, ain't he ain't gonna have no clear path where it ain't gonna be no adversity, where it ain't gonna be no haters. It turned out, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was. The old, uh, old fuck nigga hating on the young niggas, bro. That's that's how I sized it up. That's just what it was. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is not me. I'm not down in nobody. I'm giving it to a nigga that blood raw. I ain't finna sugarcoat shit. It was just, as I look back, hindsight is 2020. Old fuck nigga hating on the young niggas. Why would you say that if they was collaborating with y'all, though? Because the wedge came with the Shaw shit. When Shaw got told on, <laughs> It was over with. But I'm going to tell you something. Like I say, bro, God work in mysterious ways. God put that wedge right there. He did that. God put that wedge right there. And you saying that because y'all didn't get caught up in the indictment? You fucking right. Man, for the people who don't know who Shaw is and what happened to him. Shaw, YG Shaw. Um, I don't know the specifics because I went there, but all I know is, bro, rolling with his mans. You know what I'm saying? This is man's. You know what I'm saying? They been rolling together. He on songs with him and shit, this, that, and the third. But as it came out, you know, like I say, I don't know the specifics because I went up, so I ain't going to paint that picture. But all I can work with is the facts. A nigga went to the police and told him everything that happened. And all I know, Shaw ended up with a gang of time, decades, with an S on the end, plural, not two, three, or four of them. See what I'm saying? A lot of time. Yeah, Regardless so of what happened. Yeah. My thing is like, okay, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't there. We went there. Don't nobody know, but bitch, that was our partner. I looked at it like that was a sacrificial lamb. The fire come, kick his ass in the fire and keep rolling. And I ain't like that. I ain't like that. I didn't. A lot of the other niggas probably... Shit, well, that's bro. I can't really, you know, I ain't gonna say. I didn't bite my tongue. I ain't gonna say I ain't bite my tongue. Because there was a lot of shit that probably that I really wanted to say that I didn't really say, but I ain't finna just be like, I'm just down with that play here. Fuck, nah. It's just out of respect for that situation, I never really spoke on it because it wasn't my situation. The only attachment to that situation was Shaw. You know what I'm saying? That was our partner. This was an everyday round. You know what I'm saying? This was our everyday round. You know what I'm saying? Bro, mama passed away at an early age. You come down, the niggas that chipped together and, and bought school clothes from the Booster. Booster come through that bitch in a hot ass um, Toyota Corolla. Pop the trunk. Toyota Corolla with no hood caps on this bitch. Pop the trunk and got a trunk full of clothes. They just went and towed the outlet ass up. Nigga cash out with the boosters or whatever. They did that and put a few fits together for YG Shaw. I remember that vividly. You feel what I'm saying? And they still ain't go to school. And he still ain't go to <laughs> fucking school. But it's just the point, like, I don't like how that shit played out. I ain't never really say nothing about that shit. And I went vocal about nothing until a nigga opened his mouth and, and put my name in the mix. But I feel like... The reason niggas came straight at me because my, my light was shining so hard. My light was shining like a motherfucker. Real hard. Like, look at the shit. Like, boom. I ain't um, hit Q6 and ask Q6, let me jump on the song with you. Q6 ran me, ran me down through a few, you know what I'm saying, a few niggas who know me. He knew who to holler at to get to me. Little bro, pull up to the studio. I, wanna, I got a song I want you to be on. The first song I did was a song with him called 1090. Went in there and filleted that bitch. One take J, in and out Ruckers, crush that bitch. And I brought my own swagger and flavor to the mix. You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, bro, I ain't gonna lie, you killed that bitch, man. Look, I got an idea, I wanna whoop the whoop the whoop. He wanted to put the block boys together, but he had like a different set of cast members. I'm like, bro, I already got a, um, a situation with my niggas, bro. I'm like, well, look, check this out, how about this? When next time you gonna be in the studio? All right, I'm gonna bring them through. 
and the rest was history. Fuck that. This way it sat. And when we made that move, we got rid of the red team shit because at that point, me just being a thinker, like, mm mm, the, the association too close for that, man. We finna cut ties with all that shit. We switched that, we dumped, we ditched that rock, throw it in the gutter, go and get another. We did that. Man, wrecked that bitch and threw the keys on the roof. We finna jump in this ride right here. This is what's going on. And it just so happened to come right on time. But like I say, that wedge was, that wedge was, it was fucked up, but that wedge was, that was a divine move. That was divine. That was God. 